going? Okay, good evening. Welcome to St. Alphonsus. This is a training for pads. In your handout, you will see, first of all, page one gives you the list of the site directors. If you are on site on any of the given weeks of the month, you're and you have a problem and you need to contact a director, these are the phone numbers for the different directors on any given night. So those would be the people you would contact. Off-site, on any day of the week other than Saturday, if you need to contact somebody, you call me at my cell, Frank Madison, the first number on the list. That covers contact information. As a Catholic Church, we like to look at PADS as an example of the corporal works of mercy because it is outreach to our needy, to our neighbors in need. And God has blessed us with the great gift of this location. We don't need to discuss the bulletin. Pads, facts, and rules. The roster. We receive the roster every week the night before we open. So for St. For Alphonsus, the Saturday night site, we would receive our roster on Friday evening via email. The roster represents all the guests we will welcome into the site. There are no walk-ins accept accepted. There are no temporary IDs handed out. This is a change from previous programs. Before COVID, we would be able to provide temporary IDs and accept walk-ins. But because of COVID restrictions, we are not going to be able to allow walk-ins. Before, before the pandemic, there were 18 sites that would provide pads shelter. Now there are fewer, and mm -hmm. we're not, we don't know, we're not going to know from week to week how many there are, but right now there are several fewer than 18. Saturday night happens to be a night that St. Alphonsus hosts, and we will be able to welcome guests. The, uh, the, the Journeys program is providing shelter in hotels for 90 guests. They are always willing to receive donations monetary donations and food donations to provide for those guests who are in the hotel rooms. I should ask you just a fast question. Uh, yes. Uh, Andy's group and, and our group, are we, we doing this for a whole year? Yes. The kids? And I called Heidi and I told her we were, we were not going to continue. I don't think Andy is either. So nobody's doing food kits. I don't know how we Well, it. nobody's doing food, food kits from St. Alphonsus, but right. there are other people doing food oh, kits. Oh, yeah, from but I mean, we, yeah, we, there's nobody from our entity doing anything. Okay, well that is, and that Unless is, we want to pursue it. That um, is, I am not going to be involved in it okay. as a site okay. director. Right. If, okay. if anybody else wants to step up, if you want to continue maintaining it, and nobody's going to tell you to stop, yeah, right, but I no. understand that the double, the double yeah. duty of, yeah, right. of managing a pad site and providing food for the shelter yeah, right. can be overwhelming. Right. As of right now, St. Alphonsus will not be offering showers, so there is no issue with maintaining the showers. The guests are going to be held to very strict standards of behavior based on the fact that we have limited accommodations and we don't know how many people are going to need accommodations. Uh, the restrictions for staying on property are the same as usual. The guests will be able to go to their sleeping room, they will be able to go into the dining room, and they will be able to go outside for smoking breaks. Regarding um, their location, wherever they sit for dinner will be their seat. We won't have guests, we won't be allowing guests to jump from table to table. Again, this is a COVID change. Previously, guests were able to walk around the dining room and be more sociable, but we have to limit their movement because of COVID <coughs> restrictions. They are not allowed to use the church for prayer or anything else while the site is open. They're restricted to the rooms that are marked for guests. Smoking is outside under the canopy at the, at the doorway where the guests come in. They will know it and it's very clearly marked for smoking. Guests who leave, this is a policy that has always been in place, a guest who leaves the site for any reason during the evening is not welcome to come back. They've chosen to leave the site and they have to accommodate, make, find accommodations elsewhere at that point. Masks must be worn at all times by all guests and all volunteers. This rule is only given exception when a person is sitting at their dining table eating or when they're sitting at their pad ready to go to sleep. Other than that, during any social interactions at the tables or around the building, they would be required to wear a mask. Obviously, when they're outside smoking, they can remove their mask for that purpose. Um, sleeping. Sleeping arrangements will be made based on the number of guests. Basically, if 
if there are men, they will be sleeping in the gymnasium here at St. Al's, and women will be sleeping in meeting room C, which is basically the room directly over my shoulder when that partition is closed. First shift, accommodations. Guests will arrive at 7 p.m. We will allow waiting approximately 15 minutes. Guests who arrive before 15 minutes or quarter to seven will be warned the first time. The second time, they will be written up as, as having violated the rules. Arrivals and get check-in of guests will be touchless. One of the intake people will take the guest's number from their ID card, that the guest will hold in their hands, and then they will sign that the guest arrived and write down the time that the guest checked in. <clears throat> if the guest is exhibiting any symptoms of COVID, they will be asked to take a um, quick test to see that they're not infected. After that, there will be a, a brief touchless temperature check of all arriving guests to make sure that nobody's running a fever. If the guest is tested positive for COVID, they will be, 911 will be called and they will be removed from the property. The lunch form filled out by first shift will simply be the question, do you want a lunch? If the guest says they want a lunch, they will be marked as yes. And the second shift lunch <coughs> crew will make them a lunch. There is no a la carte ordering of lunch. Dinner is served in the dining room. The kitchen will provide dinner. All kitchen staff must be masked in the kitchen and in the dining room. Uh, the, the choice of kitchen staff to serve cafeteria style or in pre-prepared dinner plates is totally at the discretion of the kitchen staff. And the guests will be served their meals uh, using standard social distancing procedures, which means six feet distance between the guests and everybody else. That um, after that, first shift will conclude with um, the guests going to their pads to sleep. We don't know how we're going to enforce the dining room policies at this point regarding uh, guest behaviors. If, the, if there's not an overcrowding issue and there's two people who want to stay and watch TV with masks on, we won't force the issue. Okay. If it becomes a crowding issue, or if there's any reason that, that the room's too full, we will enforce a zero tolerance that all guests must go to their pads. Okay. Uh, the, the first shift ends at 11 p.m. At that point, most guests should be in their beds. For those who are not, again, it'll depend on behavior. But loud noise, ruckus behavior, inappropriate behaviors will not be accepted. Smoking will be available and open all night. We won't be enforcing any smoking restrictions as long as the guests are using the smoking area outside the door as per the regulations. So we have to let them back in? We have to be standing there? And mm -hmm. we, there are always people sitting at the door here at St. Al's, and so that is not an issue for us. Uh, second shift arrives at 11 p.m., and they will first do a brief contact with the director or whoever is in whoever has been left in charge of the site at 11. They will review the number of guests, any information that needs to be passed forward to third shift, and they will be provided with a list of how many guests are going to be taking a lunch with them when they leave. At that point, second shift will take over. Hopefully, their, their responsibilities will be limited to monitoring the door for any emergencies, listening to the guests for any requests, special issues, and making the lunches. The lunches will not need name tags since all the lunches will be the same. There will be, all lunches will be made, bagged, and put into the refrigerator so that third shift can put them out for the guests for availability. <laughs> with that, there's nothing else changes with second shift. Third shift will arrive at 3 a.m. Second shift will communicate any information that was that was presented from the director to be passed forward to the third shift regarding any special uh, guest issues, decisions that were made on the fly that need to be addressed, or any guest requests that, that go into the morning. Third shift will be informed who gets an early wake up call if there are any, and third shift will be expected to take care of early wake ups. 
Uh, at that point, third shift can relax, deal with any customer issues, any guest issues, until 5.30, 6 o'clock, when the third shift, at least one of the third shift volunteers will go into the, into the kitchen and put the lunches out so that the guests can find their lunches and take them when they leave and put out any breakfast items that are made or ready to be served for the guests. At 6.30, between 6, 6 and 6.30, the guests start to wake up. <clears throat> At 6.30 or 6.40, get, all guests must be woken so that they have time to get dressed, have something to eat, and be off property by 7 a.m. At 7 a.m. the site closes and all guests are supposed to be off property. That rule has that rule is a steadfast rule that has never changed. At this point, we are not planning to have make any exceptions to the 7 a.m. rule. It will depend on guest behaviors as we go into winter if we choose to change that. But because of the COVID restrictions and our cooperation with other sites, we have to respect that they may not be able to make that accommodation beyond 7 a.m. and therefore we are not going to plan on making the accommodation beyond 7 a.m. Oh, sorry, the, uh, but do they have any, uh, do they use the restroom for shaving and stuff like that? They do use the restrooms by the gym for their own personal hygiene. Since we will not have showers, we can expect that many will be using the sinks for those for issues like shaving and washing up their bodies as best as they can with rags and towels. Mm -hmm. Um, general, okay, so that covers an evening, 7 a.m. The cleanup crew will arrive. Cleanup is required to spray and wipe down all surfaces that make contact with the guests. That means all the pads, all the chairs, all the tables, and all the fixtures in the restrooms. All those things need to be wiped down before they're put away. After that is finished, all hard floors will be mopped. And after the, last, after the last volunteer leaves, probably just before 8 a.m., um, somebody from St. Alphonse's staff will fog the rooms with a, with the, uh, with a fogger that kills bacteria. Oh, okay. Oh. We've used it in the church during the, during the crisis last year, and so we have the equipment, and we will be fogging the rooms where the guests stay, and that will put the site back into the condition it was when we opened pants on Friday night, on Saturday night. Oh, okay, sorry to bug you without a question. No, go ahead, what are your questions, Pat? There'd be, let's say there's five of them. They got five literal pads on the floor. Yes. Uh, do they have blankets and all that? They will have linens. Okay, linens will be collected. There will be bags for the guests to put their linens in each room, wherever they're sleeping. The policy will be enforced much more strictly this year that the, pet, that the guests must put their linens in the laundry bags oh. to avoid volunteers making contact with the soiled linens. We've been, we've been more flexible in the past, allowing cleanup shift to do that, but this year, because of the restrictions with COVID, we are going to enforce more strictly that the guests have to take care of their own laundry. Oh, okay. And then there are the pads themselves. We we move them into we will pick the up, gym. We pick up the pads and wipe them down. That is the policy. What about setup? Pardon me? Setup. Setup will put the pads on the floor and the pillows just as usual. That's that has been what we've done in the past. The setup shift will set up the tables in the dining room. <coughs> they will reorganize anything that's in the dining room so that school supplies are out of the way and out of contact with the guests and then provide St. Alphonsus furniture for the guests to eat and sit. The pads will be placed on the floors, the linens will be on a rack where the guests will be able to choose their own linens. The other issues, I believe, are more about personal interaction with guests. The rules here are pretty clear and they make sense if you think them through. First of all, interaction with guests is always limited to first names. So for example, if your name is Bill, then you tell the guests to, you, you encourage the guests to call you Bill. You don't use your last name so that they cannot in some way try to find you off-site. Um, obviously with families with children, that's, um, that is a very important rule to be, to be enforced. And so as a general rule with all guest interactions, you're encouraged to refer to every 
volunteer, and every guest also is referred to by their first name. Um, name tags are provided. Guests and volunteers, that, that the rules about name tags have been pretty loosely used here, but certainly they can be used and can be enforced if it becomes necessary, depending on the number of guests. <clears throat> there is no offering of rides to guests. Their guests, especially when they see a new volunteer, will sometimes see an opportunity to ask for assistance after the, after the night shift is over and they're getting ready to leave the site. They will sometimes ask for money, they will sometimes ask for food to go, and they will sometimes ask for transportation. It is against the rules and it will be met with very strict response if a volunteer violates one of those rules because it creates a bad environment for all the other volunteers at all the other sites. So we do not, we simply say, no, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And there's no reason to be rude or, or, or unkind to simply say, I'm sorry, I cannot help you with that because the guests know the rules. It is not our goal to make it troublesome for them. If a guest violates the rules to the point where I have to address it, I will address it and they will be written up and then it goes to the journeys program and they will deal with it. it again, it's, it's not our goal to make that happen, but if I have to do it, or if Mike has to do it, or if the gym has to do it, or if Wendy has to do it, a guest will be written up and then they will not be a problem for us to deal with, it will be for the journeys program to deal with. <coughs> Any other questions? What about if, um, if someone has a, um identifying shirt on, has their name on it, or has where they work. Okay, well, if with youth volunteers it's a problem because sometimes they will wear their school jerseys. With adult volunteers, it's less of an issue even if they're wearing a work, a, a work shirt, but as a general rule, you should not wear clothing that has identifying, uh, that has identifiers on it, with exception maybe to St. Alphonsus, because you don't want the guests to know where you work because they have been known to track people down at their places of work, they've been known to track people down at their residence, they've been known to track people down, especially kids at their schools where they go to school. And we try to discourage any off-site interaction. That being said, the other rule is, off-site, you do not acknowledge guests. And they all know the rules and they most likely will not acknowledge you off-site. So if you're in the jewel and you walk past a person that you saw last night at the pad site, you don't acknowledge them. You treat them the same way you would treat any other person you did you never met that you walk past in the jewel or in the mall or on the street. The same rule about loaning money or giving transportation applies every other day of the week. Because Familiarizing yourself to a guest to the point where they would consider you a more than a more than an assistant at the site could end up being troublesome in the future, and it's best not to invite that sort of trouble. So that covers the night here at St. Al's. I'm pretty sure that covers it. Did I miss anything? <laughs> Okay, um, because you can see the volunteer shifts and activities. Uh, set up kitchen, set up the dining room, and I have no view. No.